Welcome to Beat Diabetes, where we discuss ways, means, hacks, tips, and insights that will help you to lower those glucose levels. On today's program, I'll be sharing about the cause of insulin resistance and how you can train your body to become more sensitive to insulin. Plus, I'll share a tip almost nobody talks about, which will practically guarantee weight loss. Coming up. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description. Well, welcome to another edition of Beat Diabetes, where we'll be looking into comments and questions related to the subject of thoroughly annihilating diabetes in your life. And uh, in this case, uh, I want to start with a comment. Uh, the person says this after watching the video where I mentioned that the very worst diet of all is the high carb plus high fat diet where you're getting high both, high carb and high fat. And this person says, uh, I'm confused. Does this mean uh, I just can't put any kind of oil-based dressing on my salad? And I had several uh, responses like that. In other words, should I be terrified to ever mix any kind of fat with any kind of uh, carbs? Well, the answer is no, it's not really that bad. You don't have to worry quite that much. I mean, even in nature, most foods are going to have more than one macronutrient in it. Uh, nuts are a perfect example. Nuts have carbs, not so many, but they have some, and they have fat, and they're a perfectly healthy food to eat. So it's not a matter that if you eat uh, fat, you can't even have one little carb. It's just you can't eat high fat and high carb at the same time. You know, take your pick, one or the other. I showed you the hamburger in that video. And, you know, you'd really be better either eating the bun by itself or eating the meat by itself, but eating the bun plus the meat, you're getting the high fat plus the high carb. But that does not mean you can't ever have a mixture of some fat with some carbs, but ideally you'll have a lot more fat and not so many carbs. In, a, in the case of a salad, a salad uh, just is going to be normally a low-carb thing anyway, low-carb food or low-carb combination of foods. So to have a little um, olive oil or whatever dressing based on oil uh, is not going to be a problem. So no, you don't have to get that fanatical about it. Uh, you just have to be wise not to be way high in carbs and way high in fat in the same meal or in the same diet, really. Okay, here's a lady talking about weight gain and keto. Is it even possible? <laughs> and there are many that would say it's not possible. When you go keto, just eat to your heart's content. Eat until you're totally stuffed and don't worry about it. You know, and I have always stressed you got to have a little self-control. So this lady says this. You're the first person I know who explains this in simple terms, how you can gain weight on keto. And although it rarely happens at the beginning, because at the beginning you don't know hardly what you can eat and you start slashing all kinds of things out of your diet, so you will rarely, like almost never, gain weight on keto at the beginning. But after a while, you can, as you start figuring out different keto foods you can eat. Uh, this lady goes on to say, many will say calories don't matter, you don't need to count, eat until you're satiated. Uh, she says, right, but not four to six times a day. I'm proof you can gain weight on keto. Uh, she says, when I started due to being pre-diabetic, there was a lot of junk, sweet, carby foods that I cut out. So a lot of high sugar foods, high carb foods that she says I cut out and I lost weight fairly quickly, got to my goal weight, which is, you know, true almost 100% of the time. If you go from a standard diet to a keto diet, you will almost certainly lose weight. She says, I did. I got to my goal weight. Uh, decided to quit smoking to get even healthier. Well, that's a smart move. Smoking is just not good for us, not healthy for us. Uh, she says, well, uh, to try to get over the smoking cravings, I was snacking on lots of keto foods throughout the day. Uh, nuts, cheeses, keto desserts, etc." 
So I've managed to put on half the weight I, lo I lost back uh, when I was, uh, I lost earlier on from eating too much. Calories do matter when you overeat following a keto journey. You're completely right. You need self-control also. Uh, and she's exactly right. You, you've got to have some self-control. And I'll go you one further. Some people will, will adhere to the standard keto line, which is that when you eat carbs, you will typically gain weight because your pancreas is going to produce more insulin. That's going to cause you to gain weight. There's truth to that, but it's not quite the whole story. So they adhere to that. So they are under the impression if you eat high carb, you can't hardly help but gain weight. And if you eat low carb, you can't hardly help but lose weight and you'll never have a problem with it again. But the reality is there are fairly high carb eaters that are slim. And uh, even though they may, um, you know, have a lot of carbs and provoke a little more insulin than normal, still they don't overeat and they eat smaller portions and they stay slim and yet they eat fairly high carb. And there are some people who are on the standard American diet and they're eating, you know, basically all wrong, <laughs> high carb and high fat and uh, lots of protein as well and just junk food. And they're still slim. And I have a son like that who uh, has been skinny all of his life. And my dad was like that. And they, neither one of them paid hardly any attention to their diet. Now, my dad... Uh, was a little bit uh, on the on the positive side in the sense that he just ate small portions. Uh, and actually, my son is the same way. Uh, even though they eat pretty much whatever they want, uh, both my dad, who's passed away now, but uh, he ate uh, small portions. And if you looked at his plate, you'd say, man, how can he get full? But he weighed about 130 pounds most of his life, around five feet seven and 130 pounds. He was not a big guy. Uh, I've got a son who's uh, 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 probably about that weight, and he takes after grandpa, and he eats small portions, but he eats whatever he wants to eat. Now, that's not healthy, but still, uh, it's a much better situation than in the case of someone who is eating the standard diet and just stuffing themselves. The reality is for some people, if they just had small portions, they could pretty much eat whatever they like and live into their 80s without diabetes and without major health problems. I hate to admit that because I, that's not what I recommend. I don't recommend the standard diet, but I will say portion size counts a lot. And if you're eating a lot and you're overweight and you're stuffing yourself at every meal, uh, you are harming yourself. And it's not even a good thing if you're stuffing yourself with keto foods. Uh, now, there are uh, some people who will tell you, tell uh, overweight people, it's not your fault because you're eating the wrong foods. If you just switch to keto, everything will be solved and uh, there's nobody to blame. But the reality is part of that is on us. If we're eating big portions, uh, we're going to pay a price for it. And if we'll cut those portions, we won't pay such a price. Now, the best and the ideal situation is go keto or go low carb, eat lots of salads, get your vegetables, get your nutrition, higher fats, fairly low carbs, moderate protein, and take not necessarily tiny portions because I don't do that, but at least moderate portions. Just don't stuff yourself. And let me give you a good rule to follow along these lines. Here's a rule that could save people uh, scores of pounds if they just follow it. Don't ever take second helpings. When you're about to eat a meal, take what seems to be reasonable. And usually our first portions are a reasonable portion. We take a portion of meat, maybe a, uh, we, a certain size salad, maybe some side dish, you know, some vegetables or whatever. And if you look at your plate on that first go around, it's reasonable. It's good. If you stayed with that, you'd be fine. But where we get in trouble is we finish our plate we finish what we took initially and we say, well, I'm just a little bit hungry still. I think I'll have a little more of this, might have a little more of that, or I think I'll dip into some nuts, <laughs> I'll have a piece of cheese. Before long, you've doubled your calories. And, you know, I hate to disagree with all my keto brothers <laughs> because they are my keto brothers, but calories do matter a bit. If you stuff yourself with calories and with food, you will gain weight, my friend. It doesn't matter whether you're high carb or low carb. Uh, the, the low carb will be a little better for you and, and you'll get a better trade off on your calories to the weight gain, but it's not like you can't gain weight on keto. 
So uh, you, you just can't overeat. And uh, one of the ways it'll help you is just recognizing the, uh, that you're, you know, you, you've got to limit the carbs and then also weighing yourself on a scale. You know what, what, what uh, the, a blood sugar meter is to our blood sugar, a scale is to our weight. And a lot of people will never weigh themselves because they don't want to see what it has to say. But that scale can give you some motivation. And I use a scale all the time. And if I'm a little overweight uh, from what I have set for my limit, you know, I'll scale it down. I'll scale down the eating and I'll, I'll cut back a bit. And if I'm a, on the little on the slim side, I'll eat a little more and, and just try to keep in a, a good range. Okay, here's another comment. This one is a, a bit of a criticism. Uh, this person says carbs are not the problem. When it comes to diabetes, it's insulin resistance. So, you know, you sometimes I read between the lines, whether I'm reading accurately or not, I can't say. I think I am in this case. He said, it, I think what he's saying is this you talk all about carbs and you got to limit carbs, you got to watch your carbs. And he says, carbs are not the problem, it's sugar. It's, and it's insulin resistance that causes a problem. So here's the deal. In a sense, he's right. It's insulin resistance is really the problem. But where do you suppose that insulin resistance comes from? Does it just drop out of the sky? Are you just unlucky because you happen to have insulin resistance and your neighbor who doesn't have insulin resistance is, is, uh, is lucky, but you're not lucky? No, my friend, insulin resistance doesn't drop out of the sky, nor is it a matter of luck in most cases. Uh, chances are you got your insulin resistance from having too much insulin floating around in your bloodstream for too long. And how do you get all that insulin floating around in your bloodstream day after day after day after day? Well, the answer is you get it from all those carbs because carbs provoke insulin. And if you have too much insulin for too long, you'll become insulin resistant. You know, uh, one of my favorite uh, pastors, a guy who's been long dead. He lived in the 1800s. His name was Charles Spurgeon, pastored in London. And uh, he, he wrote a book called Lectures to My Students. He was telling young uh, students for being in the ministry about how to preach. And he used an illustration that really applies here. He said, I want you to think about a man who is taking a nap leaning up against a factory wall where there's all kinds of noise. There's all kinds of machinery going on, people talking, machinery going. It's a very loud place. He's leaning up against the wall and he's napping. With all that noise, he's able to sleep. How can that be? And, he, and then he makes the point, which is, but if all that machinery should stop and it go to a dead silent, he'll suddenly shake himself and wake up. Because he's become so used to the noise, it doesn't bother him in the least. But if the noise stops, he'll wake up. Well, the point Spurgeon was making was preachers ought to pause and never go at the same speed and keep their voice at the same level the whole time. They ought to stop and then move on. And that, that pause will kind of shake people and get their attention. Well, what does that have to do with insulin resistance? Well, if you are constantly stuffing yourself with carbs carbs, more carbs, a carb, carb here and a carb, carb there, here a carb, there a carb, everywhere a carb, carb, your body gets so overloaded with insulin, it's got to defend itself and it basically ignores insulin, just like the sleeping man up against a factory wall is ignoring all the noise and the commotion that's going on inside that factory. He's just kind of become noise resistant. Your body can become insulin resistant by all the insulin, insulin that you're producing by eating your candies and you drinking your Cokes and your fruit juices and eating your pretzels and your bagels and your huge sandwiches and your French toast and all the rest, your body is shouting stop. And it because you won't stop, it is becoming insulin resistant. So the idea, well, it's not really carbs, it's the insulin resistance. Well, yeah, it's both. It's the carbs producing the insulin that is making you insulin resistant. When you cut back on those carbs, it's like the factory that suddenly stops and there's dead silence. And suddenly the guy wakes up. Sometimes when we just stop eating all those carbs and cut it way down, so your body wakes up and becomes more sensitive to insulin. 
I hope you enjoyed that. If you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. And please give this video a thumbs up so YouTube will recognize its value and promote it to other diabetics that are desperately seeking answers. God bless. See you again soon.